Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2017 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited in the Big Bear Special Edition. So this one is in the Rhino color, and you can see the color there, and it has the, uh, the decals that are kind of a flat black, so they kind of blend in. So it has the Wrangler name there, maybe with the sun angle, you can see it a little bit better. It also has the more decals here on the side. They kind of blend in from a distance with this particular color. But the decal on the hood is what I was checking out because last year I did a video on the Big Bear and it didn't have the decal, which that was one of the uh, the things that I thought was really cool because it has like this topographical map and I wanted to check it out, but the other one didn't have it, but this one has it, so I'm glad to see that. Here in the front, it has like a satin or a matte black grill and the Jeep name right here in the center matches the center portion of the bumper. It's kind of like a metallic paint. I suppose. Now your tow hooks are there on top. The headlights are halogen reflector headlights in the round shape. Pretty standard, pretty uh, traditional for the Wrangler. Now the fenders are unpainted. Same thing with the hard top, the three piece hard top. So unpainted, sort of like the Sport. This one has the steps here on the side. Privacy glass in the back. And a three-piece hardtop, if you're not familiar, the front portion actually comes off as removable, sort of like T-tops, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to take the whole thing off. You can just take, take off the front portion. So you have BF Goodrich tires on 17-inch alloy wheels. And they have that same matte black. Kind of surface there, sort of like the grill, I guess you can say. Has a class two trailer hitch with the four-way outlet. And then it has the tow hook there. And the tail lights are protected with this little grill, this little uh, um, cage, I guess. I guess that's what you call it. And the fuel door has a little cover. So this is right, like the regular sport would just be an exposed cap. This one has the uh, a it's actually made out of metal, like a cast aluminum uh, material covering up the cap. All right, so with the with the hard top, it's really easy to access the cargo space back here. Uh, with a soft top, you would have to unzip the back portion. This one just has a, you just lift it up, has this uh, heated glass back here with a windshield wiper as well. So here's your cargo area when you have all the uh, the seats with passengers in them, you still have all this cargo space, which is nice with the unlimited or the four-door Wrangler, which is really handy to have extra space and extra seating, seating space. Uh, this bag, there's like a uh, canvas type material bag in there. That's to hold the T-top portions and they strap to the back of these seats. So that way it keeps them out of the way. You also have an emergency kit right here. Has like, um, all kind of stuff, I don't know exactly, I didn't really go through it, but it has this additional stuff. Let's see here. I'm not gonna unpack it or anything, but it has like a toe strap, gloves, and just kind of like some off-roading type stuff, I suppose. I also want to mention that the uh, the back, the second row seats have has the latch system for car seats. So you have the anchors on the back. It also folds down in a 60-40 split, which I'll get into in just a minute. And back in here is a little storage pocket, which is actually lockable and has some stuff in there. It actually has your handles, which haven't been installed yet. So you're like handles that go up on the, uh, the roll cage next to the hand. Um, you know, next, next to each seat and also has a toolkit so you can help you take off the doors, fold down the windshield, and of course take the hard top off. And this, this storage compartment is lockable so when you close this down, uh, this 
portion. The tailgate actually covers up this portion, so when you lock the tailgate, uh, it gives you some level of securing your stuff back here. This lifts up and has your uh, jack and tools for your spare tire, which is, of course, located on the back of the vehicle. And then you have these little places to put screws for your door hinges and your uh, roof screws, so that way, when you take the doors off or whatever, you have a place to put those uh, bolts and screws, and they're secured under this panel so you don't lose them. It's very important not to lose them or you won't be able to put your, your stuff back on. So looking at the back seat, uh, it has a cloth seat with a mesh here in the center. I don't know if you can take a look at that. And the floor mats are awesome. They have the, uh, the tire tread kind of looking like mud with tire tra tracks going through it and has a Jeep name. Also, it's one continuous uh, floor mat all the way across, which is nice. And there's some cup holders and your actual window controls are here in the center same thing with the front which i'll show you that in a minute your roll cage also has speakers a dome light and each one of these grills you can kind of see the speaker in there all right so uh, these seats fold down so when you fold them down there's two thing that, things that happen one the headrest kind of folds up out of the way like so but also the bottom portion goes down flat with the floor so you don't have any unused space under there and it gives you almost a flat floor with the actual cargo space back there. And real easily uh, fold it down and you can have a combination of cargo and passenger space if you need it. It's additional cargo. Let's take a look under the hood. Now with the Wrangler, it has these latches here on the side, here and here, and there's no latch under the hood. so. If you want to secure the hood and keep it from people from opening it, you'll need a accessory that mounts in here. It's like a little lock that you have to use a key to unlock it. But as it is, you can just lift it up. Okay, so here's your uh, engine bay here and the has an insulated firewall. There's your battery and it has a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 paired to a five speed automatic transmission. It's covered up with plastic, but uh, there is a Right under where this is V6, right under there is where your oil filter is. So it's really easy to get to once you take that cover off. Okay, let's take a look here on the inside. So I have the seat pretty far back and I can put my legs completely straight out. So there's not a super, it's not like super roomy, but it's very adequate as far as the leg room. Now, if you have a manual transmission, the clutch pedal will take up some of this leg room. So you wanna keep that in mind. Uh, you want to test drive a manual transmission, make sure it has enough legroom, especially if you're planning on uh, doing long trips and stuff. But as far as the knee room, not, I mean, the seats are very comfortable and it, there is plenty of room overall. Okay, so let's start here on the steering wheel. It's a leather wrapped and it's a really good thickness and soft to the touch. I think Jeep does a really good job with their steering wheels. Cruise control here on the right and a volume on the back of the steering wheel. I really love that feature with the Chrysler products. You can do your volume, also change through your preset, uh, your audio source, basically. There's an up and down, if you're not familiar with this feature, there's an up and down and then a center button. So, and it lines up perfectly with your hand. So as you're driving like this, use your back fingers to adjust your volume up and down and then the center button changes your audio source. On the back side, on the other side, it changes through your audio track up and down or the radio station or whatever. And then the center button cycles through your, through your presets uh, on the, like the radio station. You also have voice recognition, Bluetooth controls so you can send and receive calls. And then these buttons correspond with this little screen between, right here in the center of the gauges, which we'll get to in a second. Your front and rear wiper controls are on the right side. And on the left side is your turn signal, but also has your headlight controls. So you have off, parking light, and then there's your headlight and your fog lights, you just pull out like so, and it will uh, turn on your fog lights. So when you turn them off, it kind of snaps back in place. You can't pull it out when it's off. And then your dimmer switches are right here for your interior gauges. Okay, so speaking of the interior gauges here, there's your speedometer on the left side with your fuel gauge, and on the right side is your RPMs and your engine coolant temperature. It also has your odometer right in here and what gear you're in. But this little screen, you can see it has the S, 
that's your digital compass and then the outside temperature now that CAL flashing means that the compass hasn't been calibrated uh, this vehicle is brand new off the truck and hadn't even been washed or anything yet so to calibrate it basically you just drive in a real tight circle in a parking lot and that way it faces the compass in all four directions and it'll just kind of calibrate itself but you can get some more information using these buttons here so you have a uh, this button with a compass button the menu button and these little arrows so let's kind of cycle through using the menu button first digital speedometer I'm gonna push down and it's gonna give me a digital speedometer right there push menu again we can get your average miles per gallon which we can reset uh, how many miles to empty tire pressure timer and your vehicle info gives you more information coolant temperature oil life oil pressure transmission temperature and then it goes back there at any time whatever screen you're in you could just push this button and it takes you back to your compass and your outside temperature so I'm gonna go ahead and push that right now and it takes you right there which is nice has a storage pocket right up in here so you can put gloves or sunglasses or whatever in that center portion it's just pretty much all um, black non-reflective surfaces here for the dash and here's the touch screen this is the Uconnect 430 now Jeep has used this particular radio for a while, this touchscreen, so hopefully next year they'll have an upgrade. But right now, it does have a CD player with a DVD reader and MP3 reader there in the back. Traditional volume knob and radio. Let's take a look at the radio. So you can see your presets are right up in here, and then you can change through and go into AM, FM, satellite radio. And then your media, there's different like there's actually a hard drive 40 gig hard drive i think it's 28 gigs available and then your disc and then the auxiliary input as well as a usb input on this side you have uh, a menu button so you can go into um, your dis different display and picture view options you can actually look at the hard drive look at music pictures and manage your hard drive right in the screen there's actually a usb port so you can add your pictures and music and all that stuff right here and then right below it is your auxiliary input for plugging in a device and playing through the sound system and your <laughs> window controls for all four windows are right here automatic one touch down and you got to hold it to go back up but look how fast that goes I know it's kind of an odd place to put the window controls but the way the doors are designed they were designed to be removable so they have they want to have less switches the least amount of switches and stuff as possible in the doors all right and i like the way these articulate these vents they kind of move around you can close them real easy either way and you can aim them really easy to use even with gloves on all right so fan speed temperature where you want the air to blow we don't want to blow it on the camera and uh, pretty straightforward there you can also recirculate the air or have outside air and your front and rear defrosters are over here as well your side mirrors are adjusted with this little joystick. You just pick a side and you can adjust it just like a little joystick. Your trash control, you can turn that off. Default is always on in case you need to spin tires for whatever reason. Downhill descent, this is for off-road use only. Uh, this will give you a, a set speed going downhill without, keep, without losing control basically is what it's intended to do. And then your four-way flashers are here. Also an AC adapter. You can turn that on. It's actually located right under here. And it's a three-prong Edison plug. It handles up to 150 watts. And then you have a 12-volt power supply right here. So like a cigarette lighter input. And you notice as a key that tells you that it turns on and off with the ignition switch. There's a net pocket and a little storage pocket there. And there's net pockets in the doors as well. So uh, basically when you're you know bouncing around on the trail you can put stuff in there and it's not going to be rattling around it's going to kind of hold it more in place so that's what's the I, i'm assuming that's what the intention with the net pockets are there's your four-wheel drive shifter this is your regular shifter and it has a uh like a auto shift where you can manually shift through the gears when you have it in drive here if you bump it to the right or left you can actually change through the gears and if you accidentally bump it and change the gear you can press it hold to the right and it'll go back and drive there's your cup holders which i have a bottle in 
give you an idea of the size and there's the handbrake parking brake so there's two places uh, you can well actually three in the back there's a secure place that's lockable the center portion is lockable and your lockable glove compartment is right here uh, but this compartment basically an armrest too it's kind of soft for your arm and it's wide enough to share with your passenger I think so you have two buttons here the small one and a big one the small one opens up the smaller compartment and then you close it and it push the big button it opens up the larger compartment so there's actually uh, the window sticker and different things in here um, the manual and all that but uh so yeah it goes in there quite a ways there's also a 12 volt power supply and a usb charger in there which is nice and you can run wires in and out of the compartment using these little places right here it has an auto dim rear view mirror it also has some lights under here and the visors have mirrors in them they also extend out and there's your uh your release these are the releases for your hard tops here and it's separated here in the center so you can remove these separate from the back portion and these actually screw into the these t-top portions too so they secure it as well in addition to the latches so let's look at the visibility in the back so uh, the headrest kind of get in the way a little bit but overall you have a lot of a lot of windows to look out of so not a big deal I think next year they're gonna add a backup camera to the Wrangler but uh, you know still see pretty good back there manually adjusted seats for both for on the Wrangler as well. Now the driver does have the ability to raise and lower the seats, but uh, all manual um, in the Wranglers for all trim levels as of right now. So you can see I mentioned the door switches. There's only one, you can manually lock it or the only electrical switch is the door lock there, but they just try to keep the interior doors fairly straightforward and, and and least cluttered as it has a soft to the touch armrest there all right so thank you for watching and thank you to van underwood chrysler jeep dodge ram for allowing me to show off another awesome jeep and i'll see you guys next time you can use the pause button if you want to get some information off of the window sticker here it's the big bear so they start off with a sport and then you can see the optional stuff start down here and it goes all the way over to the second column. I try to include the window sticker just in case. It's always handy to look through all the different options. And I, try, I have a link and I try to provide information in the description, but this kind of hard codes it into the video.